I had the nicest conversation with Kate Sharp and Philip Cohen. So these are the farmers over in the UK that own the rams we're going to be using for artificial insemination and had a chance to talk with them and I recorded it. It was a Zoom call. So I'm going to share it with you guys here next, but I just wanted to offer up a few points of clarification, some of the things that were discussed that maybe you're not familiar with. And I think the biggest takeaway for me or the 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 thing I feel like I learned or gained from the conversation was just a, a much better intimacy and appreciation of the actual rams themselves. So these are rams that are on their farms right now. They're younger. Um, Oberyn, the white ram, is two years old. And the, um, Jacob is two. The other ones are just uh, lambs last year. So that was really nice just to talk to the breeders and the owners. But the, So yeah, so a couple things. Number one is... I didn't ask them to do much of an introduction, only because I didn't want to take up a lot of their time. So, Kate Sharp, she's south of Edinburgh. She's in Scotland, her farm. I did learn from her, and it's not really published anywhere on her site that, um, oops, <laughs> piano's still on. I did learn that she, her husband's family owned this farm, so it's a family farm, and that's what Richard said, that a lot of the sheep farms over there are like that, that they're generational. And then Philip is in northern England, so they're only like an hour and a half's drive from each other, so they work together quite a bit on stuff. They're both really active in the Shetland Sheep Society, which, by the way, I just joined yesterday because, I don't know, I'm kind of caught up in it now. I want to learn more about those rams and just the organization and some of the things that they do. Right in the beginning, they talk about the R1, that scrapey resistance, that genetic marker for scrapey that they're testing for. So uh, I'll put a little tag in the video, and I'll actually put one here. So if you want to go back and watch the video where I was talking with Garrett, Kelly, and Linda about that, they go into a lot of detail. So it's inter interesting. And also about the extension gene that also came up as something that the um, UK or U.S. government, I'm not really sure which one, is screening for to prevent that from getting into our genetic pool. Also, they talked about AB Europe. So AB Europe is an agency in England that helped them with the collection and all the paperwork and stuff that has to happen. There was enough of a conversation between Philip and Kate and myself about AB Europe that it piqued my interest, so I'm going to try and get an interview with them. I don't know if that'll pan out or not, but... I figured it was the next logical step in the process, so we'll give it a shot. Um, they talk a lot about some of the different shows that they uh, participate in. So they are really committed to their livestock shows over there, it sounds like, to, you know, just from talking with them in this discussion. So I'm going to put some links in the, the video to some YouTube videos of some of the shows where they're available and also links. So it's really interesting. I didn't know, I'm feeling like an idiot right now, but they talk about the Great Yorkshire Show, which I've never heard of, which is ridiculous because it's enormous. It's this just a big, like, multi-day, all sorts of livestock. Um, I think, I can't remember, Rich said it was like hundreds of thousands of people attend this thing. You know, and I'm thinking that Rhinebeck is a big deal at 20,000 people a day. This is more than 10 times the size. So, so they talk about that. And then the last thing was after the, after we concluded the video, we were doing some follow-up chatting and messaging afterward. Um, we didn't talk about, which I think is really interesting and I'm excited about, is that three of the rams, actually the three rams that we're getting straws for, all rude. So we talk about Oberyn in the video. The fleece that Philip was talking about that he showed was actually a rude fleece. So I really felt connected there because I was wondering if their type of Shetland that they're raising there is has that trait and all three of them do. The other thing I wanted to mention is I, I'm thinking actually now about getting a few more straws now that I feel this connection. <laughs> um, there are straws still available, so if you're interested, um, you can reach out and I'll put a link. It's Foggy Hollow Ranch is where you go, the website you go to to purchase the straws. I'd learned through this process that our vet actually performs this service. So ask around. It's not an uncommon service any longer. When we first did it, whatever, 15 years ago, we had to travel quite a ways to get this done, but it's not 
it's worth looking into if it's something that you think you might want to do. And, you know, we talked already about the benefits of getting the fresh genetics, getting some genetic diversity. So I think those were the only clarification points that I wanted to bring up. So I hope you enjoy the video and thank you so much for stopping by. I always forget to mention this, but I really am grateful that you take the time to watch my content. I'm very flattered and happy that you're here. So thanks. Hi everybody. So today I'm really excited to introduce you to two of the UK breeders who are the owners of the rams that we're gonna be using in our artificial insemination process this fall. So with us today is Kate Sharp and Philip Cohen. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. You're welcome. <laughs> welcome. We're very happy to be here. It's so yeah. exciting. So I'm so excited about the, just having, you know, the semen from your rams over here that we can use in our breeding program. And, you know, we learned from Garrett and Kelly and Linda last week about the amazing amount of work that you guys put into helping us with this process. So that was, I had really absolutely no idea. I wasn't really um, paying attention to it early on. So I learned quite a bit and gained a real appreciation for you guys and the, the hard work that you put into this for us. Yeah, it was, it was an amazing process to be part of, to be honest. There was, it was very challenging at times. And I think it was the focus of the majority of my year last year, but um, it was very rewarding at the same time. Um, especially when ultimately we had success, the Rams passed the various stages of the mm -hmm. process. It was fantastic when we when we actually got the message from um, I think it was Linda put it on that it had arrived um, in the US with you, and um, so it was just uh, a great experience to be part of all around. Yeah, it was good because at the beginning it was quite disheartening when we kept get, getting back from other members R twos and R twos and yeah um, AR, ARR ARR ARQ. So, so yeah, then when we finally got R ones. Yeah, a long time in the making, hasn't it? Because um, I know Kate's been testing for a number of years to try and find an R1. Um, and it, it, yeah, a lot of rams have been tested in order to get to this point. Yeah. yeah. Well, we had R1 murets and R1 blacks, but you can't take them. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because of the extension gene, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Garrett explained that really well to us last week. So, so yeah, I guess that's something, I mean, kind of <laughs> off my script here, but, you know, you... um. Well, we breed for wool, right? I'm breeding my Shetlands with a primary purpose of offering my wool to hand spinners. And when you, I don't think people realize all the other traits that you have to pay attention to to ensure you've got good quality animals like the horns, right? It has nothing to do with their wool, but still the tail. And now the scrapey thing, which I learned about, which we don't test for that over here. So, so it's just, I don't think people realize the amount of back stuff that has nothing to do with wool quality that you have to pay attention to in order to yeah. those beautiful fleeces. And, and I think the scrapey thing as well, it's it's a bit of a historic thing rather than an, a significant current problem that we have in the UK. Um, but in the past, it was such a problem to such an extent that they had a national scrapey plan and they did regular testing for the scrapey genotypes people would select for our ones but it must be 10 or 12 years or maybe more um, since that that scrapey plan finished um, and since then people haven't been routinely testing and therefore we haven't mm -hmm. got accurate records of which rams are r1 without doing testing from a fresh fresh start and um, so it was that that's why it was a challenge to find the ones that were our one because we just don't have that data anymore yeah. and also when the first semen went over to the states and um, we didn't have they didn't have to be r1 rams then because all the rules were different then yeah i see um, okay. and they didn't even have to be a, they didn't even have to be scrapey tested i don't think in those days um, it just had to be an approved Shetland ram that went that went over. Just had to be approved by the Shetland sheep breeders group in the early days. Huh. Um, so that was so finding R ones was quite challenging. Yeah, much more rigorous. Now. Okay, well, so Philip, my question for you is: It sounds like it was, but was this your first time being involved in a ram collection in that process? This, this was the first time I was involved in a 
a, a process of this magnitude. We've done some private collections, so we we have a couple of rams stored with our vets. Um, but beyond that, we hadn't done anything significant. Um, so this was the first time doing anything like this. Um, yeah. So what was was there anything that really surprised you through the process? What was the most unexpected thing? Oh, there was a lot of surprises throughout the process, but um, I think the the most unexpected thing, I mean, we'd done a lot of work with Garrett and Kelly and Linda in the past to to try and find these R1 rams. And we got to a stage where Kate had had hers tested and she had a, a couple of R1 rams that, that came back that were suitable. Um, we'd done our tests. We found three boys that were R1. So we, we knew we had a small pool of animals that could potentially um, go forward for the next stage. Um, and the next stage was me calling AV Europe to see how soon we needed to start start things with them. Um, and I think we might have had a week or 10 days turnaround. The phone call went something along the lines of um, AV Europe came back to us and said, if you can get them in isolation by next week and get the ball rolling and get your vet signed up and get the government sign off, um, we can get them all sorted in line with the rams that we've currently got down in our collection centre um, and move them all forward as one batch. Um, which to have uh, so much work to do in such a short scale um, time scale was was unbelievable um but we made it work um yeah so i think that the, the initial time scales were challenging and um, throughout the process i mean there was quite a lot of a lot of stress at times but i remember one night it was a few days before the rams were going into isolation um, and AB Europe had sent me dozens of documents and forms that needed to be completed before we started the process and some of them as we were going through the process as well um, and I sat on my living room floor with all of these forms printed out in different piles for different rams to work out what on earth it all meant <laughs> and which ones I had to do so I had a poly pocket with a post-it note to say which which ones when they were completed what needed to be completed in advance of another form what needed government sign off etc um, and i just remember thinking this is this is going to be hard work but i think it's like everything once you get through the process and you understand the process a bit better it does make sense um, yeah. but when you're sat with dozens of forms four rams in front of you it felt like quite a quite a challenge at that yeah. point <laughs> Very intimidating. Yeah. Probably felt like calling your barrister to help you fill out some of the yeah. <laughs> There was a lot of calls to AB Europe and a lot of calls to our vets, but uh, they were very helpful um, and they helped us a lot with it. Yeah. That's good. Uh, so AB Europe, that's the agency that, um, I mean, what do they do exactly? What's their role here? Yeah, so AB Europe are the, the collection organization. So we isolated them at our, our holding um, and then they went down to AB Europe to be collected they would check all of the paperwork, they would do the, the export health certificates um, and do all the liaising with um, the, however, the border control to get everything exported over to the US. Um, so they're sort of an agent that does that process for us. I see. Okay, so Kate, <clears throat> I was looking at your website and it talks a lot about your experience judging sheep. You know, you're a fairly well-known Shetland judge over in the UK, actually over here as well. Um, so I would like to hear it from your perspective, just, you know, kind of go down the list of the four rams and what qualities about each of them you think makes them special. The first and foremost, the, yeah, well, Jacob, um, I think he's got striking markings. He's got, he's got lovely wool, com confirmation, nice horn set, good teeth and nice tail. So basically all of them had that nice conformation, nice, nice structure, um, nice horn set, and, and the fleece were, was quite exceptional, and the, that nice handle, the fleece handled well, it was nice, it was, you, you touched them, they were nice and springy, they were nice, they were, they were good all round animals to start with, and bearing in mind that two of them were shear lines, which was, um, and we had two lambs, which you always take a risk with lambs, but they were exceptional lambs. And they just stood out as, as four nice animals that having been in, in the States, seeing what you have over there, I just thought, well, we both just thought that it would complement, what we were sending over would complement what you already have over there. So mm -hmm. hopefully it would give a balance. And we assessed them on the same as how we'd be set, assessing our own sheep if we're selecting a ram to put to a female we were selecting on the same basis as that. Mm -hmm. 
so um yeah, I think as well, I mean, it was the some of the, the history of the lines as well. So mm -hmm. we knew that the lines that we had have worked really well for us in our breeding programs. And all four rams come from a ram called, well, uh, are related to, they're not all direct progeny of him, right. but could right. go back to Sunningley Coriolanus. Um, and he was a fantastic producer for us and for previous um, uh, people who've used him. Um, so we, we'd worked with the lines for a long time we knew that they, they were very good quality lines um, proven lines in term, mm -hmm. and they're, they're just really very special yeah, attributes that we felt would be useful um, to, to you in terms of breeding um, especially from you know from a wool quality point of view Kate's yeah. touched on the handle but and the other thing about Orberton he's just gone from strength to strength because he t he started off as a shearling, a lovely shearling, but he's blue blossomed into a magnificent animal now. Mm -hmm. He's he's absolutely. I know Philip wouldn't say that, but he will agree. Um, he is. He he never. In, Philip never blows his own trumpet. He never. Okay. He doesn't. <laughs> but Orbiton is is just a lovely ram, and the handle on the shit on the fleece that was at the Great Yorkshire. Oh my yeah. goodness! Um, yeah. it really was you. You, you you couldn't actually have made the feeling I got when I felt it was oh my god <laughs> really it was so, so Kate, nice. you're, you're a spinner right Kate you spin yes yes yeah. I'm a spinner what, what would you make with Oberon's fleece um the handle was exceptional and when you part a fleece I, I always like to see it cobwebs so it looks as if when you part it and you'll know what I'm talking about it, it looks like cobwebs because it all stick, clings together, but yeah. it all's very fine. And you can, and if you look in, you can see it all. And that was just wonderful. Yeah. And you could spin that up into very, very fine lace fleece and still keep the handle. And it was, and the, 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 um, it was just a lovely fleece that you say, oh my goodness. And the other thing is, I would not card that fleece before I spun it. I would spin it straight from the fleece. I, I, I probably wouldn't even wash it first. And um, I would be spinning it straight in the grease because it wasn't over lan. It didn't have too much lanolin in it, which was good. It had enough, but not loads. And you you just want to, you just didn't want it to cuddle it. So it was such a nice yeah. fleece. Can't appreciate how how good a fleece it actually is. Um, and that was off the sheep, but the sheep is a lovely, is is go growing into his body. He's getting he's getting more masculine. The ram, and he's just he's lovely. Oh, awesome. I have to say, he's. Yeah. <laughs> We've, we, I've got some pictures. He was he was at at um, Bellingham Show at the weekend, and he won the best white um, trophy and was reserve overall champion. Actually, reserve overall champion to his dad. Uh, so we got champion and reserve with father and son. Um, but he just, uh, you know, uh, he looks nice. He looks very nice, if you if you ask me. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, he, he's done well because we've shown his fleece twice, and his fleece was champion at the Great Yorkshire Show. Probably out, so there'd be thirty to forty Shetland entries at the Yorkshire yeah, Show. Um, we took it to Ripley Show, and it won the the White Hill Class at Ripley, um, and then we took Oberon himself to Bellingham, um, where he had um, a successful mm -hmm. weekend. So he's, he's well, congratulations. He's a nice boy, thank you. I did actually when I was going out I actually didn't I was going along at Great Yorkshire show and I actually didn't realize it was fle Philip's fleece that was one because I had I took second to it and I'm going oh my wee little fleece oh I got second then I felt the first and oh my god and I think Philip came around then and says oh deal you know, about oh I, what do you think I says that white fleece is lovely and because it really was it was stunning and I thought oh my god I could never have beaten that yeah. Now is that um, a fleece right behind you there, Philip, on the shelf there? Or where, it is, where, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so you didn't end up selling it. it. You kept it. Not yet, because we might do some more shows with it. Um, so there's there's another couple of shows that we might show it at. Um, the problem with showing it again is some of the points that are awarded are on presentation. Um, so at the Great Yorkshire show, it's a four-day show, and people are interested to see it, it to feel yeah. it, they pick it. Um, so now it's actually more or less falling apart in yeah. places. And I took it to Ripley mm -hmm. again. It's been picked apart. Um, so if I can make it like a fleece and presented well and roll it back up, we'll be showing it again. If not, we might we might not be able to. But um, we'll see how it goes. I managed to get it back in one piece for Ripley. Um, so hopefully it'll be 
it'll be all right. Mm -hmm. You're wonderful. I want that, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you gonna? I mean, what are you gonna do with that after? That's all said and done. What is your? Plan? I'm undecided yet. Undecided okay. because um, sometimes when they're very special fleeces and they've done well, and um, we've we've had some success in the past with fleeces, um, we do sometimes get them processed. Um, Kate's actually done processing for me in the past and had it all carded up, ready to use. Um, and if it's a special fleece of a special shape, we might use it ourselves for something. Nice. Mm -hmm. It's like a blanket or something. Yeah. Can I... Yeah. La the last yeah. one Kate did, it was actually. Oh, a spotty fleece um then i took the, the black bits out kit spun the white bits and we made it into a baby cardigan for my it was a present for my wife when we had our first son Love <laughs> lovely so lovely so you yeah. the, the other thing i was just going to mention about um orbison um am i correct in saying that his grandfather was melton thousand pound winner you're testing me now um his sire is half brother to magnus right so the his sire's to... half brother yes, yeah the so, yeah yes um the the line going back i had the the privilege to judge at melton a few years back and philip had this lovely we i first saw this ram at great yorkshire show we had this great cat mog at a great yorkshire show and it came off and it was a lovely sheep. I liked it then at Great Yorkshire. He went and I think he won another show, a champion, a, sh a show at Ripley with it. And I judged it there and it's a lovely, I placed it champion. Then it came to Melton and I placed it um, reserve champion at Melton. But um, I had the privilege of bidding for this woman had, had asked me to to buy this ram for, for buy Philip's ram for her, and she was paying a, wanted to pay a thousand pounds for it if necessary. She would go up to a thousand pounds, and I was bidding, and I was so chuffed because this ram it merited every ounce of that money. He was a stunning ram. I placed him reserve champion at Melton because I liked uh, there was it was nip and tuck. There wasn't much in it, and. The champion that I placed, subsequently Philip, myself, and our colleague Suzanne all went together and bought this champion ram. And Philip had the reserve champion, which I'd placed at reserve. And I brought it back to, to Scotland. And the woman, um, she purchased it directly from Melton. But I, I had the privilege of driving it back with this thousand pound top in the back of the trailer. And it was then we met up a couple of days later with the woman that purchased them and she was over the moon then and she loves them to bits and there's no way he's going to be moving from um her her property and she just she saw him she saw him on the picture when she saw him it was, it was advertised and and then um, it was she said how much will he how much do you think i should pay for him i says several hundred pounds and um, she says go up to a thousand pounds i says a thousand pounds she says yes go up to a thousand pounds if need be and honestly i'm standing there bidding for the shram and i was over the moon trying not to smile because there was two or three other people interested interested in them and it wasn't off once they reached about 300 pounds 400 pounds they were genuine people they weren't just off the walls that the, the auctioneer sometimes takes fictional yeah. bids to Seriously. push up to a reserve but Philip had no reserve on him. Up and people were bidding. The more I'm looking, so they're trying. I can't miss. I can't lose it for ten pound, and it stops at I think nine hundred and eighty. No, nine hundred and fifty. <laughs> and somebody and she, and I and they said a thousand pounds, and I bid up to a thousand, and nobody else bid after that. So he was. And there's there's only been in the history of the Shetland Sheep Readers Group, in the history, possibly two maximum that has reached anywhere near a thousand pounds oh, yeah. well that's definitely a good and there's more, the breeding program philip in one just over a thousand i think it was 1100 is the second highest there's ever been in the, the history of the shetland sheep breeders group to the history of the, it's it's a credit to philip's breeding and amy's breeding all the all the years and persevering and trailing around looking for nice rams and not just taking the first one you see there he's focused on what he wants to to breed and how he wants to get there, which is great to see younger people coming in. I did it 30, 40 years, 30 years ago, I did that, but not now. <laughs> Leave it to Philip. <laughs> That's fantastic.
fantastic. All right, the last question I have. So your breed association, the Shetland Sheep Society, right, has a assessment process that's, we don't use that over here. And I just would like to have you talk about it. How does it work? Why you have it? And then what challenges you come up against with the process? Yeah, we have a RAM assessment process now. The criteria for eligibility is rams need to have two broad adult shearling teeth up um, and an inch of new wool. So not the lamb fleece, this second year fleece. Um, and you can have them inspected in subsequent years. But as a, as a the first point that they qualify is once to have the two adult teeth up and have an inch of wool so that you can make a good assessment on the quality of both of those features. Um, I think the inspection process was created to ensure that we improved quality and didn't have any crossbreeding in the sort of Shetland population. Um, so there's a lot of questions on there that are geared to identify traits that might be a feature of other breeds. Um, but effectively now what we do is we try to promote quality of, in our rams because a ram is such an important part of any flock. Um, but on top of that, it's a fantastic learning tool. So I know when UK judges have come over to um, to the US to, to judge at the various shows, we run through that inspection form as a way to teach people what our breed standard actually means. Um, so it's fundamental to the training process that we have to get new inspectors and and then judges as well, um, because it, it's good for that, um, that education point of view. Um, on top of that, it's a good way to get statistics on our national flock. So if we see any issues or faults that are becoming, you know, dominant, or I said not dominant, but common in the breed, and we see common reasons that these rams are failing, so, such as teeth. Um, I know the judges and inspectors panel that monitor the ram assessment forms uh, a number of years ago now did quite a lot of work on wool on the forehead because they noticed that the ram assessment forms were showing that rams didn't have a lot of wool on the head. So they did a lot of work to encourage breeders to look out for that feature. Um, and more recently, they did a lot of work on teeth and confirmation because we saw quite a few rams failing on those features. Um, so it, it's really a process to encourage quality. Mm -hmm. Yes, an ed educational tool for members. Yeah. So how does it work? So I'm a breeder and I, you know, I'm using three rams each year. So how would I take advantage of this process? Yeah, so it's it's a, it's generally a free process um, unless there's some travel expenses. I don't know, Kate is, Kate's better at answering that part of that question. <laughs> Um, but generally it's free at most events um, unless it's non farm yeah. inspectors I think I might explain that um, you'd contact the judges and inspectors panel which is currently chaired yeah. by Kate, Kate, Kate runs or looks after and coordinates the panel um, and then we do various inspections either on farm where we would have a charge for fuel expenses for inspectors um, or we do them at shows and other events throughout the country um, breeders, members will bring their rams along we have two, at least two qualified inspectors. So when, when Oberon was inspected a few a few days ago, I think we had four qualified inspectors and a trainee yeah, having a look over him. Um, but typically the process requires two inspectors um, and they will run through the form. There's a number of points on that form and providing, providing all of the, the boxes are ticked in the right place um, and it's a good quality animal that's been assessed, then... Um, they should pass through. So if you have four inspectors, are you getting four different assessments or are they all working on the same form? They're all working on the same form. Yeah, it's just very daunting because he was that by some key experts in the breed and <laughs> got some lovely yeah. comments too. Usually we'll have two main inspectors doing the inspection. Yeah. We'll possibly have two trainee inspectors standing in, looking and asking questions so you can tell them what we're looking at if you see the same thing and show them what we're we're assessing it or yeah but it's it's two and we have a form in the bottom of the form it signs off you sign off who's right. inspected it and it's two main inspectors qualified inspectors and two usually two trainees so you have four inspectors but two's doing it and the two trainees are standing and learning and yeah okay so I would just say, do, do people have to like give you not notification that they're bringing rams to an event so that you kind of have a feel for how many you're going to be inspecting? Or can you just show up? 
Yeah, usually notifications better because then we can ensure mm -hmm. that we've got an inspector yeah. or two inspectors there. Uh, uh, that I think it's been a bit of a problem trying to get inspectors to some of the events this year, um, mm -hmm. just because it, it hasn't coordinated. We talked about the four rams that are part of this U.S. importation, and the three of them are too young or whatever. And then Oberon, you said, has just had his assessment, right? So when, yeah. when they went into isolation, usually the rams are, well, they can be inspected from a year old, typically, if we say from a year old, and whenever they get their inch of fleece and their two adult teeth up. Uh, so it's typically 18 months anyway, um, rather than a year. Uh, but any point from that year old, you can check to see if they'll meet the criteria for inspection. Um, when the two old boys, so Jacob and Oberon, were, went into isolation, they were at that year old stage. So they effectively missed out a season last year where they could have been mm -hmm. assessed um, and otherwise would have been assessed because they were they were in sheep lockdown in isolation in, um, in one of our barns. Um, so they haven't been done because of circumstances around last year and the two younger boys wouldn't have been eligible last year but are eligible this year. Okay. Um, so we've had them in because we are actually, we, this weekend we've been taking their fleece samples for Sue Watson to bring over to um, to the show that she's judging later. The, the two phone cat boys still don't have the teeth up yet, so they're still not ready to be inspected. We tend to, you know, usually by 18 months, they'll have the teeth up. Um, but Oberon, he was out at a show on Saturday. He had his inspection and he passed with flying colours, so it was very rewarding. Nice. Um, and I think Jacob is booked in for later in the year, so hopefully... Yeah, I'll, as soon as possible, we'll get Jacob done. But as two rams, they're very similar, other than colour, you're similar in terms of quality. Um, mm -hmm. And I would I would think that Jacob will do well on his assessment as well. All right, well, this has been quite an education. I have about 100 more questions to ask now, <laughs> just from what I've learned here. It's really amazing, amazing work and just... I can't express my gratitude enough for the work you guys have done. This is um, this is a really big deal for us. I'm almost about ready to start crying. I'm so <laughs> so 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 grateful. So thank you guys so much. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. <laughs> thank you for having us. Thank you. Okay. Cheers. Thank you. Juice for you.